Hi and once again welcome to another chemistry lesson. We are still busy with acids and bases and um, and also busy with pH and we're looking in this video at pH indicators. Okay and so in the previous video I really hope you found it helpful. Uh, we looked at pH indicators and or at pH itself what it means and hopefully you remember that a pH is a measure of the concentration of hydrogen. The lower the um, pH value, pH then um, ranging, not always, sorry, wrong brush stroke, pH ranging between 0, 7 and 14. Now it can be less than 7, it can be more than 14, but this is usually the observable range. Less than 7 would mean a solution is acidic. Again, we're not measuring acid strength. Uh, we are measuring the acidity, acidity and the alkanity, alkanity of, um, of a solution. So is, it, is a solution acidic or is it basic? How acidic is it or how basic it is? Um, is it the closer to zero um, and even negative values, the closer to the negative values, the more acidic it is, the closer it is to 14, uh, the more basic it is. Okay, so this is our pH range that we are going to look at. Now, when I talk about a pH indicator, I am talking um, about a substance uh, and again, let's change a little bit of color. Okay, it's a substance that can detect can detect the presence the presence of hydrogen and hydroxide. Okay, ions, and it does so by reacting. Well, not reacting, reacting, reacting with it and changing color. Okay. So, in other words, an uh, indicator is a uh, um, is usually a substance. It's either a weak acid. It's either a weak acid itself. Okay, which means a weak acid will be able to detect hydroxide. Okay, in other words, it will be able to react with the hydroxide to become a little bit more neutral, and in becoming more neutral, it will change color. I forgot to finish my sentence. Okay, so a weak acid will, or it can be a weak base. A weak base. Now the weak base will be able to detect the presence of hydrogen ions reacting with it and therefore changing color um, as it becomes more basic. Okay, so we get a whole range of these substances. There's literally hundreds of them. Well, I don't know actually how many there are, but I know how many we are going to look at. We're only going to look at three and this is a little bit you have to know that I hate having to remember things so I'm going to try and make it easy for you to remember it uh, this is unfortunately one of those things that you are going to remember we are going to work with methyl orange okay so let me actually methyl methyl orange Bromothymol blue, bromothymol blue, and phenolphthalene, phenolphthalene. Okay, uh, I think it's spelled like this doesn't really matter okay these are three uh, that we are going to work with and um, what you need to remember is the color changes um, metal orange will change from red red to yellow brimoth uh, bromothymol blue will change from yellow to pink sorry to blue not pink to blue and then uh, 
phenolphthalein goes from colorless colorless this is how I spell color colorless to pink okay so the way the little sentence I've I'm using to remember this is my big pig my big pig rides whoa, rides your cat why why be proud okay makes no sense but that's not the point <laughs> okay so my big pig rides your yellow cat so why be proud my be uh, standing for methyl orange bromothymol blue is big pig is fin uh, phenolphthalein R um, and then so what you're going to have to remember is this this phrase my big pig writes your cat why be proud and then you'll need to know that this is uh, methyl orange turns from red to yellow uh, bromothymol blue change from yellow to blue and phenolphthalein goes from colorless to pink whoa look at how i spelled pink sorry <laughs> anyways that is not the most important part though what is more important than this is actually the ranges that they cover so for example let's use what color aren't we using so far okay all of them really okay the ranges that they cover and um, methyl orange goes from four okay so not exactly four but four and a half roughly four and a half it's actually more like four point um four point four but i'm gonna let going to let it go from 4.5 just to make it slightly easier that is the range of ph that it can measure so for example methyl orange doesn't go from red to yellow which means if it's uh, if it's red then it has a zero ph and if it's yellow it's 14 not at all it covers a very short range all of these cover only a range of about 1.5 so methyl orange goes from be between 4.5 two um six okay again this is a rough estimate it's not exact it's just so that we can remember more or less what range it can can measure and uh, brom uh, bromothymol blue goes from about six to seven point five okay and uh then uh phenolphthalein goes from about eight point five to about 10 okay so what I want you to notice or how I'm going to remember this is I'm going to start by going 4.5 6 uh, sorry 4 6 8 so I'm going to remember this is 4 6 8 okay then I'm going to just add a half to each of the ones at the end and then I'm going to add one and a half to each of these um, to complete the range so this one plus one and a half gives me six this one plus one and a half gives me seven and a half um, sorry I keep using commas there uh, which in South Africa is fine but you're probably not watching this from South Africa and then 8.5 to 10 okay that's eight and a half plus uh, one and a half gives me ten. Ten. So this, I th I think it's quite easy to remember. So and I'll repeat it once again. Okay, my big pig is methyl orange, uh, bromothymol blue, and phenolphthalein. Uh, and then writes your cat. Why be proud? Stands for red, yellow, uh, colorless, colorless. Okay, why be proud is yellow blue and pink and then what this uh, the ranges are covered from four six eight add a half to each ones at the end and then add one and a half to each of the of them to cover the range now let me just explain what this then now means what this means is if i were to add methyl orange to a substance 
and it will change the substance or methyl orange um, is changed to red. Now there's different ways in which this can be added. Uh, one for example is we can have methyl orange in a um, in a liquid form which makes it a um, which um, it can be either any color okay but it's probably orange which is now the, in the middle here so going from red to yellow if we go from red to yellow we'd go yes red okay then in between is orange and as I'm getting closer to yellow this is the the ranges I go through from red to yellow to uh, the red to reddish orange to orange to um, um, orangey yellow and then eventually to yellow so these are the color this color spectrum and the lowest part here if it's red it means that it is that the the substance I added to has a pH of 4.5 or less it can be anything less than 4.5 okay if it is yellow it means it can be a substance that has a pH greater than 6 so I can only really measure the pH if the pH falls somewhere between four and a half and six. So if it is red, all I can say it's less than 4.5. If it is um, yellow, all I can say it's larger than six. But if it's a, a shade of orange, I can compare it to the scale and see more or less where does it fit on the scale. So if I were to divide this into into three parts then each each of these parts will be about 0 0.5 so in other words I will be at 5 there and sorry I'm just just squeezing everything in here but if it's a reddish orange then it is probably a pH of about 5 if it's a yellowish um, uh, orange then it's probably a pH of about 4.5 uh, sorry not 5.5 uh, if it is an, an orange, a real orange, orange color, then it's probably something like uh, somewhere between 5 and 5.5, like 5.3 or something like that. So that's how I would use methyl orange. Um, bromothymol blue goes from uh, yellow to blue. So if I were to go from yellow to blue, let me maybe show you the color. So here we've got, we've got our blue and here we've got our yellow at the lowest range. Now if I add a little bit of blue to yellow, I would get this color. If I add a little bit more, I get this color. If I add a little bit more, I am getting that color. Okay, so notice how slowly but surely I am reaching my, my blue color, okay until I eventually get to there. Notice how we go from yellow to blue, which again, this is bromothymol blue. At this range, we will have six. At the highest range, we would have 7.5, which means I can again divide these into smaller, into smaller parts. So if I divide into three parts, then if I have a greenish color, I am probably looking at something like six and a half. If I'm looking at a light blue, a light blue color or a greenish shade to my um, blue, I'm probably at about seven. So this is probably the color that you will notice uh, bromothymol blue would have when uh, we add it to water. Now, methyl orange, I don't know if this is important, methyl orange is a powder. Okay, it is a solid that you mix into your solution and then it creates this, this, this color range. And uh, a bromothymol uh, blue is also a powder. Okay, again, a powder that is dissolved into, the, um, um, into a solution. And then phenolphthalein is also a white powder okay again dissolved in this into the solution now it, they don't have to be powders what they could be is they could also be dissolved into um, water I believe and then small pieces of paper can be soaked into that water and uh, when it is then um, the, these pieces of paper can then be used as a, a paper indicator because it would be soaked up into the paper. So um, there's different ways of applying it, but I just wanted to mention that. Now I've looked at the range for methyl orange. Let's look at the range for, um, for phenolphthalein. 
Now, it's slightly more difficult to do that because here we're going from a colorless, and it's difficult to represent colorless, but imagine now water um, that's adding pink cool drink to it. Okay, so you have got your pink cool drink added to water, and, and basically all that's happening here is your um, is you are getting a, a, a weaker and weaker concentration. It just looks weaker and weaker until it eventually becomes white okay so i hope i'm showing it pretty enough using my color scale here okay so uh oh, there we go so again in uh, in this we'll do a similar thing we'll divide it into about three parts Okay, this one goes from 8.5 up to 10. So in other words, if I have a slight pink coloration in there, I'm probably at about nine. If I've got a pinkish coloration in there, I'm probably at about 9.5. If it is clearly pink, um, a, a, quite a dark shade of pink, then I would be at about 10. So hopefully that was helpful and I hope my little short method of remembering it is actually going to be helpful to you as well. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.